it turns out when you get a 35mm roll of film, you don't have to take 35mm pictures. The film era of photography has a couple of aspects that we don't mind forgetting, like waiting a week to have your images developed, or incorrectly loading a roll and not getting your pictures at all. But we lost a couple of cool things too, like being able to take different sized images even if you were only using 35mm rolls. In the early 1900s, in an era of huge film sizes measured in inches, Oscar Barnack had the idea of using narrow rolls of film that they used in cinema to make compact stills cameras. This was the birth of the first 35mm cameras made by Leica. They decided this was the smallest possible size with enough information for quality enlargements. It's called 35mm film because it's 35mm wide if you include the portion with the sprocket holes. The image area has a fixed width of 24mm and when a frame covers 36mm in length, we call it full frame. But don't let that make you think it's limited only to shooting full frame images. Like its medium format cousins, there are plenty of aspect ratios available to the 35mm shooter. The frames are usually limited by the width of the roll, but it's the camera that dictates how long the image will be along the sprockets. The smallest image size we'll discuss here is half frame, and that's 24 by 18 millimeters. And if you remember, Barnack said you need something twice that size to get a good quality print. So the major downside here is quality. The details in a picture are competing with the grain in the film emulsion. Half the image size means that the grain is twice as big as you'd find in a full frame image. There are two things we can do to mitigate. One is use a slower speed film like 100 to reduce the size of the grain as much as we can. Or two, we can just embrace the gritty, grainy nature of higher speed films. The half frame concept allowed 35 mm film to be used in tiny interchangeable lens cameras like the Olympus Pen F. These were really small compared to the SLRs of the time. And it's comparable to the size difference of Micro Four Thirds cameras today. The images are literally half the size of a 35 mm frame, meaning you're getting 72 images instead of the regular 36. And doubling your image count is handy if, say, you're going on vacation and the quality doesn't matter too much, or you're testing ideas and you'd like to do it at half the price of regular 35 mm frames. It also means the camera and lens can be smaller, making it a more portable solution. When it comes to square images, your mind tends to go to those classic medium format cameras like a Hasselblad or a Rolleiflex, because there's not a lot of 35mm square format systems out there. But one that I did find is the German robot camera. And this one's got another quirky feature that instead of a rewind knob, it's got a spring-loaded winding knob so that you can rapid fire many pictures in a row. There are no landscape or portrait orientation decisions with a square format. The images are 24 by 24 millimeter and about 50 exposures can fit on a regular 35 millimeter roll. Now another quirky camera is the Stereo Realist. It doesn't take just one picture, but a pair of pictures to make a pseudo three-dimensional image that you can view by either squinting your eyes or using a dedicated viewer. The images can also be viewed and printed individually. The format's not quite square at 24 by 23 millimeters, but that's close enough. Now that we're at a larger image size than what you would consider full frame, we're gonna get cleaner images because the film grain is gonna be smaller compared to the size of the image area. And as a compromise, we're gonna get fewer images on the roll. You can find dedicated panorama cameras such as the 24 by 59 millimeter wide looks and the Hasselblad X-Pan, which takes 24 by 65 millimeter exposures. I've not got any examples here, but they are beautiful machines. It's also possible to get adapters that squeeze 35 millimeter film into medium format cameras to take advantage of the wider image circle that those lenses produce. So here's the compromise. With smaller than full frame images, you're gonna get lower quality images because the grain is relatively large compared to the area of the frame. But as a benefit, you'll get a lot more images on the roll. And larger than full frame images are gonna be just the opposite. You'll get a higher quality image with fewer frames on the roll. Of course, regular 35 millimeter images split the difference. And because of its popularity, 
Most of the 35 millimeter cameras use that format. There are no digital equivalents of the quirky film cameras that I've shown in this video. There are no square or panorama digital cameras unless you crop images in post. And quirky format cameras is just another reason why film is not dead.